Hello, good morning. In today's vlog, I'm going to be taking you around the land and showing you some of the things that we can forage for here. I'm going to ignore the things that have been planted already, such as olives or figs, they've been planted specifically for those foods. We're going to look at things that grow in the wild and what we can do with them. We're those weirdos, a family of seven. Nearly three years ago, we gave up our conventional lives to live, travel and work in our self-converted Sprinter van. July 2021, with the increase in travel restrictions caused by Brexit and the pandemic, we decided to buy off-grid land in Portugal to live a more sustainable lifestyle. Follow along with our journey as we turn our beautiful but derelict land into our very own slice of off-grid heaven. Wildlands. Wild this is salad, Burnet. It's easy to recognise because it grows in a little clump like this. And it's got these long stalks coming off with leaves opposite each other. These very easy to recognise leaves. This grows all over our land. It grows like crazy. And uh, it's supposed to have a mild taste of cucumber. Now I can't taste that. But it is another leaf to be able to include in some kind of a salad or something. Something else we have growing in abundance here on the land is sheep sorrel. Now I'm 90% certain that this plant here is sheep sorrel. I've used an app to identify it and then once I found out that it was supposed to be sheep sorrel I looked up sheep sorrel and compared the photos there with what we have here uh, and I'm pretty sure it is but I haven't tried eating it just in case. So I'm going to try and identify it in a few more different ways first. I've got a foraging book that I can dig out from under the bed and I'll try a couple of other different websites as well. Now this one, we've got quite a few clumps of this growing near the house which makes me wonder whether it was actually planted originally but I've got nobody that I can ask so um, if you have a look at the leaves you know, it's perennial wall rocket and now that you know that I bet you recognise the little spiky edge shapes of the leaves and a couple more here another one there once you get your eye in and you know what you're looking for, you start seeing edibles everywhere. A couple more clumps over there. Now we're on the hunt for hawthorn. I have to be kind of careful today because I'm pretty sure I've heard boar munching and crunching on our land and I don't want to surprise any of them. Um, so I'm going to make lots of noise as I walk down the land. La 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 la. I feel like a right wally doing this. Do 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 do. Do do do. La 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 I'm coming little piggies 
Hawthorne that I want is just over that hill. So we'll be a bit careful. Getting down there. Looking for peas. See the beautiful yellow colour of all of our gorgeous uh, walnut trees. Not a single walnut on them. And again, that's been planted by somebody once upon a time. So it's no good for us because it's not proper foraging, is it? If you've planted a fruit tree. Mounds of sheep sorrel that I'm just walking over here. Having a little listen for boar. While we're here, have a look at our lowest terrace. We've just had all the bracken cut down. So it now looks beautiful and huge. So much room down there, not sure what we're going to do with it yet. If you peer down here, I'll just zoom in so you can see, that's more sheep sorrel. All growing along down there. There's another couple of clumps, so that's in abundance. We've come down to the bottom terrace now, and this I'm so thrilled to have found on our land. This is a really beautiful mature hawthorn tree. Now the berries are beautiful. What you can do is dry them and put them in tea. I've seen people um, split them open, get out the, the pip, which actually takes quite a lot of room inside the berry. So once you've gotten rid of the pip, then you can use these in baking. I've seen somebody make cookies with them. I haven't tried that yet. Uh, I dry them for tea. Um, but you can also, the, the magical thing about this tree is the leaves are edible, the berries are edible, and the flowers are edible too. Hawthorne used to be known as bread and cheese plant in England. Aren't they beautiful? And always when you're foraging, I've already been down here and taken as many berries as I wanted for my tea. I could have taken more. When you're foraging, it's important to leave some for the animals and the birds. And maybe some to fall on the ground to regrow. I have a sneaking suspicion that this might be some type of lemon balm. I rub the leaf and smell it, and it does smell vaguely lemony. It needs more identification, I'll take some back up. I told you yesterday everything was strimmed. You can see it's all strimmed. And then here is evidence that a boar has been here last night. You got fresh earth. You can't really see that very well, but this is all earth that's been dug up. So they're around and about. Here's a look at the bark and thorns of the hawthorn tree. Let's have a look at some of these thorns. Seriously spiky. We have a lot of brambles around and about on our property. And we're just going to let them do their thing in the hope that we get blackberries off of them next year. So this absolute beauty is wild fennel. It has the most amazing smell, it has an aniseedy taste. You can eat the fronds, the sort of feathery uh, foliage on it, which this one doesn't have anymore, um, but I'm sure they were there in the summer. You can also pick these seeds. Let's see if I can show you. You can pick the seeds. Pick them off like that while they're green. Uh, and you crunch them up. Mm. And you get this wonderful aniseedy aromatic flavouring. You can wait till these are dry and then pick them and then save them. They go brown. Um, and then use them in your cooking. Mm. Yeah, it's good. I've also read that you can collect the pollen, which is nice in, in uh, cooking and on uh, salads and dressings and so on as well, but that seems a bit time consuming to me because you have to get a bag and hold it underneath the flowers and then shake them till all, <laughs> till all the pollen comes off. That's a bit much for me. 
um, traditional fennel, like Florence fennel, you can eat the bulbs, but I've read that wild fennel um, doesn't really give you much of a bulb, so it's really just for the foliage and the seeds. Mm. <laughs> There's some more growing just there. Super tall, it's about as tall as I am actually. Lovely great strong stems. And the bees, wasps, hoverflies, they all love it for the pollen. It's one of the only things we have flowering here on the land at the moment. And this one here, I believe is purple dead nettle. Which is also edible. Growing here at the foot of the fennel is an enormous salad burnet plant. It's huge! There's enough on there for three different salads. These are our lower terraces. Just while we're down here, might as well give you another look. And the pan across, you can see the ruin up at the top of this hill. And this is our boulder land. And there's our eucalyptus that I showed you in another video. This here, this looks like dandelion. I can't be sure, but the leaves are a bit of a giveaway. I'll take some of these leaves up for identification too. I also just want to show you, this is where I just filmed my two minutes a piece, and look what's right underneath my tripod. Oh, it's a massive bunch of salad burnet. And there's another little one. So it really does just grow everywhere on our land. We're very lucky. And I'm sure there's more things that are edible that we just don't know about yet. So we're going to keep learning, keep researching. Look at this beautiful cork oak. Isn't she grand? Here's another plant that's worth a mention. This is wild lavender. I know that you can do baking with lavender and I think you can make lavender teas but I'm not a fan of eating lavender so we just let it I do like doing this though oh that smells so amazing I've brought you down to one of my favorite places on the whole of the land for our ending two minutes of peace it's just surrounded by trees and boulders and birdsong you can't even see the vans because they're up over there behind me there's not another person. Occasionally you might hear a dog bark and that's about it. So I hope you enjoy the last two minutes piece. Thanks for watching my video. I want to add a little disclaimer on here to say that even though I've said that these things are edible, please don't go out and start eating things just because I said so. Um, always do your own research. Double, triple, quadruple check that you know what you're doing. The reason I haven't shown you any mushrooms this week is because I'm just not confident to tell which mushrooms are which. We don't forage for mushrooms. We have friends that forage for mushrooms. They seem to know what they're doing. They haven't died yet, but it's just not for us. We're not that confident just yet. I have eaten the salad burnet. I have eaten the hawthorns. I haven't eaten anything else. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your likes, comments, subscribes, and enjoy two minutes of peace. You won't be yoffing at the same time. And I'll see you in a couple of days.